All right. Well, we've got the million-dollar father and son team, Dave and Connor, to talk to about the amazing race. First of all, congratulations, guys. Um, and I guess, first off, I just want to talk about the whole sort of circle of life here, because back in season 22, Connor, you were the one jumping out of a plane. Could you ever imagine that you'd be back a year after your dad injured himself and that it would end with him jumping out of a helicopter? I know, pretty crazy, yeah, you know, uh, on the first season, season 22, when I jumped out of the plane, I thought it was the most awesome helicopter. helicopter, the most Sorry. awesome thing in the world, and then to see my dad on the last challenge of the next season, which we never thought we had a prayer of going on, to see him jump out of a helicopter <laughs> was pretty awesome. And I, you know, Dave, I, whoops. Uh, sorry, I was getting feedback there. Um, Dave, uh, did you have any trepidation about it when you were sort of pulling up into front of Maverick helicopters? I mean, did you sort of go, uh-oh? Because you, I guess the way uh, things work this season. A little trepidation. I hate heights. Okay. Because this season had a difference in that the roadblocks, I mean, I know Connor did a few more than you, but you had to do that last one, didn't you? I mean, it was down to you, wasn't it? It was. I, I had to do it, and... Uh, kind of an out-of-body experience when you, you get there and you say, gee, there's no choice, and, and it's between jumping out of a helicopter and winning a million dollars, you jump. Yeah. And I know, you know, there's editing, and I want to talk to you about just what you thought of how you were portrayed in both series in a sec, but just, you know, again, for us fans, how close do you think it was with the uh, country duo? I mean, do you feel like they were just minutes behind or set? Not even no, minutes, seconds. seconds. I mean, it was literally, if we wouldn't have passed them in our in our taxi cab, uh, they would have won the million dollars. So it literally came down to a few seconds. And then the, the karma of cabs, because the third place team was <laughs> Brendan and Rachel. And, and I just have to thank you on behalf of the world in that by keeping them from winning a million dollars, you kept there from being a Brenchel coming into the world at least any time. <laughs> so, um, you can say that. We can. Yeah. What do you, but in terms of just, you know, watching yourselves both in both seasons and, and seeing, you know, it, it, it tells a story. I mean, do you feel like, uh, did you like the way you were portrayed? I mean, did you, was there anything that made you grimace, either of you? And Yeah, you know, I think, I think uh, we were fairly pleased with how we were portrayed. You know, to be honest, uh, they can edit it any way they want, but at the end of the day, whatever you say, you say. So, you know, yeah, we had our uh, not so great moments, and they showed some, they showed, they didn't show some, but at the end of the day, even without editing, you know, you said what you said. So, we felt happy with how we were portrayed. How I mean, it's 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 interesting you say that because I think some people probably play a little bit to the cameras, but. Do you ever forget that they're there? I mean, they're they're right there in your face in the cab. I mean, you know, to be honest, yeah, you do. You know, the first few days, it's like, okay, you know, cameras are here, like, but it gets to the point where it's just second nature, and you know, just you forget they're there completely. Uh, especially if you're running down a hillside in Italy, having just been U-turned, and you you say something kind of to your teammate, and, and don't think about it being on camera. Okay, let so let's talk about that. That the, the you because that was it was surprising to me your reaction, Dave, because it is a race for a million dollars, and in that case, I guess it was a race for first place that leg. So did you, if you'd been in front, who would you? I mean, you ended up you turning the Afghan animals because it was a double U turn, but who would you would you have you turned the team that looked like they were going to beat you to the finish line? To be, to be honest, we probably wouldn't have you turned somebody simply because. You know, we weren't worried about winning legs. We wanted to win the entire race. And so you turn in somebody, if they don't get eliminated, you're, you're going to create an enemy, and then they could U-turn you down the road, or a team that is in alliance with them could U-turn them. So, you know, from a strategic standpoint, we definitely uh, didn't want to U-turn anybody if we didn't have to. Right. And then... So in terms of Brendan and Rachel, I mean, it seems also, I mean, I've, I've watched the race since uh, the first uh, season back in 2001. 
and they used to, uh, the teams would get together at the pit stops, there was some camaraderie. It seems like that's now fallen by the wayside. Uh, so I don't, uh, uh, is there any of that that's happening at the pit stops that we just don't see anymore, or? No, I mean, if, if you're not racing, you're, uh, you're kind of just sequestered, yeah, doing your own thing. Okay, and so if you hadn't been sequestered, I mean, how chummy, who, would you have been, uh, what would you have been like with Brendan and Rachel if you'd sort of had to interact with them? Um, I mean, we would have been not, cordial. We, we would have been, been cordial, nice, but, but they're not, they're not people that I ever would see Connor and I being close personal friends with. Uh, I mean, we got along great with all the other teams and, and there were people that, you know, we would stay in touch with, but so we, we kind of had a different approach. We, we weren't on the amazing race to become reality TV stars. We, we were there to have a, an incredible father-son experience and to, to do some amazing stuff together, and that's, that's and, really and I, why we did it. Right, and I think one of the amazing things you did, uh, both of you, is, uh, you know, as cancer survivors, showing people the going moving beyond it. I mean, it was sort of, uh, you know, every time I watch this, that at the mat, that crossing the finish line, there's such heightened emotion. And Dave, the way you spoke so movingly about Connor. Um, so just, you know, in terms of representing cancer survivors, and I know, Connor, you're a, a cyclist, right? A professional cyclist? Uh, and do you, what kind of message do you, were you trying to convey to people? Because again, I know some of that sort of falls by the wayside when they're heightening the drama of the race. Yeah, I think I think you know we just you know we're not trying to say we're heroes or anything, but just to to let people know that there's life after cancer, and that you know you can do some amazing things um, after cancer. Well, uh, Dave, you really did. I mean, you are. I mean, you without you know you're close to sixty now. I mean, you're by far the oldest person to ever win the race. I mean, what? What's your message to the AARP crowd? I mean, what what do you think? Why do you think you succeeded when so many others had sort of fallen by the wayside? Well, you know, I I don't know that so many others have fallen by the wayside. There's certainly a high degree of luck associated with winning the amazing race, but I also had an incredible teammate. I am, you know, by far the strongest competitor on the amazing race, and, and could not have done it without him. And but we made a good team. Uh, I mean, I, I had strengths that Connor didn't have, and Connor certainly had a lot of strengths that I don't have. And, and so he got some really good things from his mother. <laughs> <laughs> and Connor, where are you? I mean, I know you have there's five children, right, Dave? Where are you in the uh, I, pecking order? I'm the youngest of five, and I have four older sisters, so I'm the only boy. Oh my goodness! Okay, yeah. and and in terms of just to, uh, watching and because uh, I guess it's having to keep it a secret, right? I mean, that that's got to be really tough, was, especially with all those sisters. It was uh -huh. so hard. I constantly had them. So what happened? Did you win? Did you win? Oh, like this and that. And so it was definitely it was definitely a struggle. So I'm I'm really relieved it's over and I can finally <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. Uh, and we so, didn't know. You know, it was it was so fun to watch every leg because you know our family didn't know what was going on, and so they they were so shocked when we'd win a leg, and and certainly when we won the whole thing, it was really a summer. Right. I mean, just in ter again in terms of those legs. I mean, six first place finishes. Now, I'm always curious about these. Uh, obviously, the cars. You guys, I, I think you you guys won the cars, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's easy to, because each of you gets one of those. But now these trips for two. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you spent enough time together? I mean. Well, you would think so. We're actually headed on a on a trip in two days together. But um, no, my dad's taking the trip to Hungary with my mom. He gave me the ten thousand dollars. He'll take the Saint Croix trip, and I'll get the Fiji trip. I I think Connor just reallocated things here. Uh, <laughs> And that's not necessarily how it's going to be. The, the ten thousand dollars in the Hungary trip—that is how it is. But the rest of it's still up in the air. And uh, just in, in looking back, uh, you know, obviously that um, dropping out in season twenty-two, uh, Dave. That injury—I mean, how serious was it? In that, I mean, you were hobbling around. You're the 
you know, extraordinary. You still won legs even though you were on crutches. I mean, what was your recovery time from that torn tendon? You know, it, it was ugly. Uh, I mean, I got home the next day, had surgery, and, you know, they said it would be a full year of recovery, and, and it was. I've, I've ruptured my ACL twice, and, and so I expected it to be more like a knee injury. It wasn't. It's that, that whole Achilles tendon connects to your foot, and it, it affects so much. So it was hard to start to cycle again. It was hard to run again, but I had great physical therapy, and uh, they helped a lot, and I'm, I'm back. I, I don't know that I'll ever be back where I was before, but I, I'm certainly able to do the things I want to do, and that's what matters to me. And so it sounds like the timing of it was basically you were just ready when they called you to see if you wanted to be on the All-Stars. Yeah, it was, I mean, I, to be honest, I think they were, were fairly hesitant uh, simply because, yeah, it was, it was such a quick turnaround. I mean, uh, he was still rehabbing when we found out that we were going to go back on, and so, um, you know, we were a little apprehensive. We, you know, the entire time I was worried, I was trying to carry as much of the weight as I could to, you know, I didn't want his knee to go this time or an Achilles. So, yeah, I tried. We, we were nervous. Yeah, and it was great to have a personal Sherpa. Yes, yes. Well, that's actually, you know, it's, it's so interesting to talk to people that have run this race. Like, oftentimes, uh, is there a rule about that people have to carry their knapsacks to the mat? I mean, like, it, it struck me sometimes people really seem to hobble themselves by carrying everything right to that mat. Uh, yeah, you know, you have, to, you have to carry it close, but if it's in, uh, basically in sight, uh, you can drop it. <laughs> you can drop it. Okay. And what was the... Uh, just looking at just on this season, I mean, what was sort of the high point, other than obviously the win, uh, in terms of the legs? Where was where was it that you just looked at each other and went, "This is amazing." You know, I I can think of of two. Probably the first one was in Sri Lanka, and uh, when we won that ten thousand dollars, not not because we won a ten thousand dollars, but it was a pretty stress free leg. We knew Margie and Luke were really behind. And it was just fun to kind of take in Sri Lanka. It's a beautiful place. And uh, the other time it was definitely Switzerland when we won the Mustangs. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the, they're high, high. Yeah, like a high like that. But were there any lows then? I mean, you really didn't seem, I mean, yeah. again, with all those first places and even, I mean, you never finished lower than fourth. But what was the low point, if any? To be honest, the low for us was probably in, uh, in England. Uh, England and Wales. Yeah. It was it was stressful. I mean, we were so lost, which you know resulted in being in last place for a lot of the day. And to be honest, we thought this is it. We're going home. And so it was it was a rough day. That's why we had so much fun shooting the shotguns. We, we kind of <laughs> <laughs> looked at that as a stress reliever and had a blast shooting those pigeons. And just I mean, obviously you always keep your sort of eyes on the prize and are looking. For you know, to, to you know, really the la the only leg that matters to be in is the last one. But when did you get a sense that we can do this, we can win, or did you always think that even from the outset? You know, you you know, I always thought that okay, yeah, we could win this. But at the same time, there's so much more that goes into it. There's you know, an, an extreme amount of luck, um, and you never know when there's going to be a challenge that you can't do, like kicking soccer balls. <laughs> Yeah, I was curious about that. I'm glad you brought it. I mean, I mean, no, Connor, I don't want to pick on you. I mean, I really don't. But really, like when I know. the pretty blondes do better than you? I know. I know. <laughs> you have no idea. And again, just to reiterate, this is a man who, who makes his profession as a cyclist. Now, that's there's, isn't there some eye-hand coordination in cycling? Do, am I getting it? Do you do it with your eyes closed? Like, I definitely what? didn't have it that day. It was, uh, it was, I was struggling. Yeah. I mean, I, I see him walk on a slack line and do all this balance stuff, and, and to think that I could kick the soccer ball better than he could, <laughs> well, it, was, it was pathetic. We, I, and I think somewhere in there I said we're sunk. And I really believed that. I thought we were sunk. Now, I, I mean, I, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm guessing if they ever had sort of an all-star, all-star amazing race, would you two be ready and willing to go back into the oh, uh, yeah. hunt? In heartbeat, sign me up. And if my dad wasn't 100%... Never again. Sure, no, we'd, <laughs> we'd, 
we'd talk him into it. Well, we'd get him there, no problem. He loves well, it. Well, there, there, there are four sisters, and I, and I'm guessing uh, probably a very athletic mother too. So you know, D Connor, you probably you'll be spoiled for choice if you want to, you know, shift gears. But well, listen, guys, congratulations. Uh, it you made it so much fun to watch. Uh, up until uh, about a year ago, Amazing Race had won every single Emmy that they ever gave out for best reality competition series. And I think you, you know, your season could be their comeback at the Emmys. Last year they lost to The Voice, but that, it was such a great season to watch as a fan, and uh, you certainly made it uh, must-see TV for us. Thanks yeah. again. Yeah, thank, thank you. We had a blast. We're so grateful to have been able to do it. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Yeah, bye.